Butler, fresh off an extremely impressive road win against Creighton, gets a chance at another one. Now they're on the road against the best team in the Big East. That would be the UConn Huskies, who are rolling right now. I believe that is 10 straight wins for the Huskies, 20-2 and two on the season. That's the second longest active win streak in the country. Who better to break it down with me than Lucas Harkins, who, uh, by the way, did the Butler Creighton preview and recap up on the channel with Tristan Freeman. If you want to go back and see that from the weekend, you can see it on the Sleepers channel. Lucas, thank you for being here as always. Uh, vibes must be high in Butler town right now. I, I don't know what the word for Butler town is, but maybe you can enlighten me. Do you think this team has a chance of shocking the world and knocking off UConn? Uh, no. <laughs> like, I, I want to. I want to believe it. Um, Butler has just traditionally had so much struggle with UConn. I mean, dating back to the national championship game up through their matchups as members of the Big East together, Butler's really had a lot of trouble with UConn. Uh, Butler played well at home against UConn earlier this season, lost by seven. Um, in a game where UConn didn't have Donovan Klingon. Um, that is not going to be the case in this time. Now, now maybe Alex Caravan, who, who dusted Butler in the first matchup, we'll see where he stands after missing the last game. Um, but but I think that it, Butler is just a really – it's been a tough matchup against UConn over the past several years. And going on the road does not make that any easier. Uh, Butler obviously has been good on the road this year. Um, they should have knocked off Providence when they had Bryce Hopkins, but, but fell short. Um, giving up a three in the closing seconds and losing in overtime. But but then they've won at Marquette and they've won at Creighton. So so maybe this is a Road Warriors team, um, but I think UConn is a different level of animal compared to anyone else in the league. So I believe this to be accurate. I believe that Butler has never beaten UConn based on a quick Google search that I just Googled. Uh, I, I see a series history dating back to that national championship game in 2011. Uh, UConn 8-0 against Butler more interesting did to me pull, than, did you pull up the margins with that well i'm gonna say more interesting than the eight and oh mark to me uh, in six of these eight games butler failed to score 60 points in, in one of the two that they did hit 60 points they scored exactly 60 points so uh, in seven of eight games now against uconn in the history going back to uh, over a decade 15 years They've scored 60 or less points seven of the eight times. Now, this year would be the reason for optimism because they did score 81 points against UConn in that first meeting. And I think this Butler team is certainly many steps forward from the Butler versions that we've seen in the last couple of years. But um, I think there's reason to believe that this travels. And case in point, the fact that you're three and one in your last four road games with wins over Marquette, Creighton, Georgetown. Yeah, we can lump them in, but... Not a lot of teams are going on the road and beating Marquette and Creighton. Why has Butler been able to do that? Well, honestly, two entirely different ways. Um, the Marquette game, I still look back on just – it was a weird, weird basketball game. I don't think Butler played well against Marquette. I think Marquette played worse. Like, it, it was an ugly first half of basketball. I think I would catch – Marquette played a bad first half. Butler played a bad first half. Marquette continued to play bad in the second half, and Butler played okay. Like, I think that's kind of where that game was. Like, Marquette was, I think, five for 31, maybe four for 31 from three in that game at home. It was a weird, weird shooting game for Marquette. Um, it was just a weird overall game because I think generally Butler's going to win with his offense this year. And I think you saw more of what Butler is. If you're going to try and figure out who Butler is and, like, the best version of Butler is more what you're going to see in the Creighton game than what you saw against Marquette. Uh, and, and that's 98 on the road at Creighton. Um, without their starting point guard. Kosh Alexander didn't play in that game. And, and that's a game you get Jamil Telford and DJ Davis rolling with 48 on 20 for 29. Um, it, there's, a, there's a lot of scoring on with this group, and they're up to 30th in, in adjusted offensive efficiency, 97th in defense. Like, this is a score first group. And, and I think that that's, that, that is kind of the agenda, is trying to, get, trying to get the points of the basket as much as they can. But even if they can score against UConn, I, I think UConn's just... I don't know how UConn doesn't score more. Yeah, UConn's just so good, and you guys nailed They're so it. good. Uh, you, you did the UConn St. John's recap as well, and I was watching it this morning, and I thought you guys nailed it. Like, I it literally, I think the recap ended with you just being like, UConn's so good. Like, what they rock. They're fantastic. Yeah, they're, they're awesome, and you have to just applaud them. Um, I, I was looking back through the Marquette game trying to figure out, like, what the hell happened when Butler beat Marquette. That's well, a weird basketball game. 
Tyler Kolick happened. He went one for 13 yeah. in that game. Yeah. And that that's when I affectionately dubbed a stinker of a performance, a Kolick, because he had a couple of those for a little bit. But he's been better lately. So uh, this isn't about yeah. Marquette. I'm sorry. This is about Butler and UConn. Um, but no, you guys, but Butler is very difficult to prepare for because you have so much perimeter firepower. Pierre Brooks has been stellar. Everybody in my circles knows him from his Michigan State days, and it's good to see him blossom into a completely different player. But you add the DJ Davis and Telfer, like you just said, uh, when you are at full strength, like th- there's a lot of different guys that can beat you from the perimeter. What is the deal with Pasha Alexander right now? Is he going to play in this game? I don't know. He's got a foot injury. He went through warm-ups against, uh, against Creighton. It's been a lingering injury he's had. Um, they did say he played through it against Villanova after the press conference. They at least said he played through an injury, which I assume is the same injury as he sat out against Creighton with. Um, went through warm-ups, didn't wore a boot during the game, so didn't play, but uh, got on the plane without a boot. Um, <laughs> we're on boot watch. Gonna, boot watch. Boot watch. We're, we're apparently on boot watch. Uh, he got on the plane without a boot. Um, so we'll see where he's at. Um, I would assume DJ Davis is probably good to go also after he got a cut below his eye. Um, which made him not be able to take free throws during the end of the Creighton game because he had his eye swollen shut on one side. Um, so obviously things change if one or both don't play for Butler, but I think both will probably go, I would think. Um, it, but I think that there's, it, it's just, it, it's a different, I think the Pasha Alexander point is what's entirely interesting because Butler's an entirely different team with versus without Pasha Alexander. And I don't mean that in like they're way better with Posh and way worse without him. It's just different. Mm-hmm. Like Pasha Alexander does so many things well. It's obviously tremendously impactful for Butler. Um, but like Greg McDermott hit it up, hit it on after the Creighton game. Like not having Pasha Alexander made Butler way different to defend. Mm-hmm. Like all of a sudden they start four guys who can really shoot it from deep I- instead of just three. But on the other end, Butler probably doesn't kill up 98 points to Creighton with Pasha Alexander. So it's kind of a give and a take there. Um, and, and also they're just more consistent with Posh versus having the two underclassmen guards and Landon Moore and Finley Bizjack, both of whom play well um, against Creighton. I, I just think that they're going to need to be healthy to stand a chance in this game. It, it is just, man, I, I, I feel bad as a Butler guy saying that I don't see much of a chance, but it's like, Tukon's so good, man. Yeah. They're so good. Yeah, they're so solid, um, and really, they are one of those teams you have to step back and even realize like they haven't been at full strength much of this season. We've yeah. we've seen everybody there, but we've seen extended absences from Klingon now without Caravan. Um, it, it's just a team where they're so solid, they're so deep. Castle has really come on. I've been wildly impressed with him. I think he's been good all season, but I feel like the Castle that I just saw in that St. John's game – I don't feel like I saw at all in the first month of the year. Like he is an all caps dude right now. Um, So yeah, I I don't mean to, I spent the first seven minutes of this talking about Butler and I don't mean that as any disrespect to UConn, but I just, right now I'm more interested in who Butler is. They're like an enigma to me more so than who UConn is. Like, I know UConn's great. I know you're going to have to play out of your mind to hang with UConn. And I think weirdly, like at their best, Butler is one of those few teams that I would put in the category of like, could shoot themselves to a one possession game with a minute left. Yeah, I mean, they're a team that, what you can count on with Butler is they aren't going to turn it over much. And yeah. like when you're not going to turn over much, they're first in the in the conference in turnover rate, thirteen point one percent. Through the first thirty nine minutes against Creighton, they committed three turnovers. One, two of one of which was a charge, one was a shot clock violation. So one live ball turnover in thirty nine minutes without their starting point guard. When you don't turn it over, you give yourself a chance to score on every possession. And when you get hot and you're not turning it over, that that's when the points start to pile up. Uh, so I think that you, you, you're onto something there when, but like there are teams that get hot, but they can't sustain it because they're turning them over. Like if Butler gets hot, they aren't going to turn it over much. They're just going to maintain staying hot, which I think is, it is what is contributed to them having, you know, games like they have against the Texas tech and against the Creighton this year. But I, I, as I've said, it's just, UConn's different. <laughs> like they're yeah. just different. Yeah, there's a gap there where I don't think a lot of people in the Big East expected it coming into the season. It was like, well, Marquette's great, Creighton's great, UConn's great. And in reality, no, like UConn's elite. Other teams. And Creighton and Marquette are still great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, They're top 15 teams in the country. They're great. Yeah. And UConn is elite. 
like elite. So you're, yes, I agree with you there, and I don't mean I don't mean to play Big East Doomer, but I I would say a lot of those teams in the ten to fifteen range uh, are not teams I would consider great basketball teams. Like right now, Creighton's eighteenth sure. on Ken Palm, Michigan State's seventeenth. I think that speaks to more the broader college basketball scope, sure. but they're in the mix, right? Which is sure. it's still notable. I just meant that more so as praise to UConn than anything. Yeah. But separation there. Yes. Um, so here I, I spent this whole preview now trying to talk you into butler has a chance now here's my one thing on the doom and gloom flip side of this uh the reason that i don't think butler has a serious chance at winning this basketball game is because i think the only weakness i can spot with uconn right now is that i actually think they are an extremely different team in a bad way when donovan Klingon is on the bench and by the time we get to the ncaa tournament uh, he might not be on the bench. He might just be playing more minutes than he is right now uh, in the St. John's game and in the Providence game. So his last two games, he was on the bench with fouls. He had four fouls in both those games, did not play more than 16 minutes in one of those games. Going back to when he missed time, he's only played five games. He has not played more than 24 minutes. Four of those five games, he's been under 20 minutes. So I, I do think this is kind of a let's bring him along slowly and it, I don't mean it as any disrespect to Samson Johnson, who honestly has shown a lot of good things. UConn's a completely different team when Samson jo- Johnson is on the court at the five than when Donovan Klingon is. Now, I don't see Butler as a team that can take advantage of that, though. Like, to me, you've got to have a post scorer. You've got to have a guy you can rely on that when Klingon is out of the game or when he's in the game, you can get him in foul trouble. And then when he's out of the game, you can exploit it. Uh, is there anyone on Butler that you think is capable of doing that in this game? Yeah, Andre Screen is the best bet um, from a pure post scorer standpoint, and they'll get him touches um, for sure. He, he drew, I think, four fouls in the first game against UConn, shot six free throws. Um, he is probably the best bet in that area. Jalen Thomas has been better more as a 10, 10, 12 foot jump shot guy in, at the five. But I agree with you. I think that it really is going to come down to Dre is really the best option for that. If you want to get. Um, Donovan Klingon in foul trouble in this game. It's going to have to come from Butler's guards more than it does at the front court. And I think that that's where that, – that is especially where I think Pasha Alexander is definite upgrade offensively over over a Finley Bizjack or, or a Landon Moore, and that's in being able to draw contact and draw the whistle on that contact when he gets to the basket. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. If Posh is active, I do think he is the most dynamic in that capacity and for something sure. could happen. Um, all right, it's time for predictions. Ken Palm has – UConn as a 13 point favorite at home, 81 to 68 is the projected final score. Uh, I assume we're both picking UConn to win, but can Butler cover 13 points in this game, Lucas? I think so. I'll take UConn by 11. Uh, I, I do think Butler hangs around, even in games when Butler hasn't played well this season. Uh, it's mostly hung around. Like the St. John's game was, was was a 16 point loss, and that's really the one that they didn't really hang tight with down the stretch of. Um, even against Xavier that, that that got to 14 late, but I think most of these games they've played close. And I think UConn is a team that is going to be able to go up double digits pretty early, but Butler will just kind of stay within hit range and then probably get back to get back to single digits, maybe late and maybe finish it at like a nine to 11 point loss. I like that call game script wise. I do think this game's close at some point in the second half, how close I don't know. But uh, I, I will take Butler to cover. I'm likely going to be betting this game individually on Tuesday. And uh, I, I think there is something to be said, man. You guys have obviously been really good in spots where you're the underdog. You, you've been good when you have, quote unquote, nothing to lose. Um, I, we just did the this field is the house money. Yeah, we we just did the Fielding the 68 Bracketology show. It's like Butler Butler made a huge jump after the Creighton game. They're looking for more ways to stamp the resume, but this isn't something that can hurt them. UConn, I think, is in a little bit of a let's just stay healthy. Let's just coast. We're, we're atop this thing. Let's let nothing bad happen. That can leave the door open for a team with the firepower offensively that Butler has. So uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll have a happy I recap. I would love to see it. Maybe we'll have a happy recap, Lucas. Uh, Follow Lucas Harkins. Uh, He'll be back on the Sleepers channel, I'm sure, for the recap for this game and maybe some others uh, throughout the rest of the college basketball season. Subscribe to the Sleepers Media YouTube channel so you can see all of our previews and recaps leading up to March Madness.